All right. Uh, Texas, huge in recruiting, of course. Uh, Matthew, I don't know if you prepared for this, so I don't want to put you on the spot. But at the same time, obviously, official visits, camps, all that business going on, tons of speculation about where uh, guys are headed. Uh, what did you pick up from this week? Yeah, so Michael Terry, the third number one athlete in the country. This is like the number one guy that visited this weekend. Um, right now, and I said this about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, it was going to come down to Texas and Texas A&M, and that's what everyone believes. Arkansas, or I mean, sorry, Nebraska, um, got Arkansas on the brain. Nebraska uh, is also going to play a factor in that. He's kind of a weird recruit, Mark, because no one knows where he's going to play. He's a six foot three, 215 pound kid. Um, Texas seems to want him to play on the defensive side of the ball at like the linebacker position, defensive end type position, maybe offensive tight end that if he really wants to play offense, uh, a and I'm hearing is wanting the same thing. Now this is where it could get tricky because he wants to play offense. He does. That's been put out there. If Nebraska comes in and is offering similar NIL packages and is saying, hey, you can come be a wide receiver, which he wants to play, maybe he chooses Nebraska. But right now, I think they're third, and I think it's Texas and Texas A&M. But again, if this kid has a want and desire to play a certain position and Nebraska is willing to offer it, and it would kind of make sense that they are willing to do that with someone this talented, um, he could go there. But Texas is a good running. Like I said, going forward, I think – Obviously, people hear about Khalid Lockett, wide receiver, DeCorian Moore, wide receiver, um, Jamie French, wide receiver. Three out of the top four wide receivers for the next year's class are all looking at Texas very heavily, and I would love to have them. But I don't want to get caught up in them too much because then we could be heading down the Tom Herman road. He never recruited quite that well at wide receiver, but he recruited pretty damn well at like wide receiver cornerback positions. His issue was the trenches. And right now, I'm it, it's getting scary for next year's class and going forward of the offensive line position and the defensive line position. The one guy that I'm really excited and I want Texas to get on the offensive line position especially is Michael Fasusi. He went to Texas A&M this week, and I guess they crushed it. And that really worries me because if we do not land him right now, six out of the ten offensive linemen are from the state of Texas in next year's class. But we really haven't made much um, headway with any of them other than him. We could get none of those guys. And that that's just unacceptable. It really is. A couple of years ago, we had the best offensive line class probably in the history of college football or high school recruiting going into college football. And those guys are getting older. Kelvin Banks is one of those guys. will probably not be here next year. Devon Campbell, another one of those guys starting at guard. He could go to the NFL too if he has a really good year. So then – that class is moving out. You have to replenish that class three years later. And if that isn't getting replenished, we're going to run into the same issues that we had under Tom Herman. And the defensive line is even more worrisome. Um, Brandon Brown, defensive lineman from Florida. He's a low-level guy, but I think he'll climb up the recruiting rankings. Right now, he's looking at Florida and LSU. He's committed to Texas, but I'm really worried about the interior of that defensive line because a lot of these guys will be graduating and also – we haven't been really recruiting that position very well, especially since Bo Davis left. So that worries me as well. But all in all, it's going to be a very, very busy June. I think they have something like 20 plus to 30 plus guys coming next weekend, including DeCorion Moore, who will finally get to Texas again. He went to LSU actually this weekend. So, but everyone kind of said that I've listened to that was kind of like a pity visit. Like, I'm sorry I decommitted. I'll come give you another chance, but I'm not going to come here. And it's very rare for a guy to commit, decommit, and then commit back to that team. So, I don't think he ends up there. I do think Texas ends up with one of or two out of the three of DeCorion Moore, Kalik Lockett, or Jamie French. I've said all along, if I had to choose, I want DeCorion Moore and Kalik Lockett. But I don't know if I had to predict right now, I would say it's DeCorion Moore, Jamie French, Kalik Lockett. I've changed my mind. I had Kalik Lockett at one point at number two of most likely to come to Texas. Jamie French, I think it was funny what at the on three event a week to about two weeks ago mentioned a Lamborghini uh, sponsorship. And what do you know? Texas has Lamborghinis all lined up. Obviously, they have a sponsorship Um I believe Quinn Ewers had one. I know Bijan Robinson had one with the dealership there in Austin. So if that's your number one thing and you want to make as much money as possible and you want to come play in a great offense with Arch Manning, who will only enhance that NIL, I think Jamie French, and I believe he announces August 30th, 
I think there's a really good chance Texas gets him. If he gets all three of these wide receivers, Mark, we're talking about Arch Manning with this much talent at, in the wide receiver room, which I still think is going to be a good offensive line next year, just because you will still have some of that class from three years ago left over. It's probably two years ago that I'll be worried about. But if you have those guys, it's going to be really fun to watch in two years. So, Matthew, if you take everybody who's committed off the table, just assume that nobody's going to flip. If you take everyone off the board that you are 90 percent sure is going to sign with Texas, who is your biggest concern, your biggest want? I already said his name, Michael Fasusi. You have to have to get one of those offensive linemen. You have to. And right now, like I said, there's no headway with any of the other guys that I've heard of. He's the one guy that is constantly being linked to Texas, and it only hurts, Mark. He's battling, like, if he's going to commit, it's going to either be to Oklahoma, Texas, or Texas A&M. Hmm. So that's just added pressure. You cannot allow him to go to Texas A&M. You cannot allow him to go to Oklahoma. So far, Sark has done a fantastic job of, I need that guy, I get that guy. He's done a great job. He's probably batting a 1,000. I can't think of a recruit that's like, man, we really needed him, and we didn't get him. Arch Manning he got. Anthony Hill was a huge flip. He was originally committed to A&M for the longest time. About a week before signing day, nope, I'm throwing that Texas Longhorn jersey on, that Texas Cowboy hat on, and I'm committing to Texas. There's other guys like that. Michael Fasusi in this class is that guy. You have to get him. If you can pull another one along, that'd be nice. And I think that would help if you get someone like that, but you especially can't allow him to commit to Oklahoma and Texas and It would kill, um, the honestly, the offensive line recruiting um, that he's built up. And that's a position he's, done, like I said, done a really good job of. But we need two to three really good ones, and that's one that's on your radar right now that you have to nail. 